the uh, Dover decision by Judge Jones. It was uh, sort of one of those positive moments of the year. Um, but I have to think that the creationist movement is going to come up with something else, that there's going to be... They already have. You know, or a sudden emergence theory. Is that, or, or is there going to be something... What, what do you think is the next assault going to be from creationists? Because I think intelligent design is dead. Yeah, so well, what's next? Okay. You've got it right here. And that is the next thing is we don't want to teach intelligent design. We want to teach critical analysis of evolution. That is the next thing. And that is what is being pushed in a whole variety of states. In Kansas, for example, they may have changed the definition of science, but the Kansas Board of Ad is adamant saying, home the standards. We don't mention intelligent design. All we do is critically analyze evolution. So I think critical analysis of evolution is the next step, and you've got it right here. Uh, if I may add one thing, we've been talking about the science, and that's quite appropriate, but I would maintain that until the theological presuppositions that underlie the attacks on evolution are addressed, then they need to be addressed by churches, by clergy, that, that the, this anti-evolution movement simply is not going to go away, and there will keep on being new uh, avatars of intelligent design, creationism, or whatever it's called. Yeah, I mean, critical analysis is, is nearly as brilliant a, a moniker as intelligent design because they say, well, you know, how come the scientists are against critical analysis, right? How could that be? And, of course, if you look at the content of the lesson plan, it's not critical and it's not analysis. It's an attempt to convince students to uncritically swallow wholesale outright lies about the content of science. And you don't have to take my word for it, uh, and indeed the board didn't two years ago. But we now have the records, and their own science experts at the Department of Education Ohio told them, we have the sheets where they said it, they said, the underlying sentence is a lie. This is wrong. This is inaccurate. This is crackpot. This is religion. This is creationism. Uh, it's all in there. It's very, very similar to the Dover case, although they weren't quite as dramatic in their public statements. That's the only difference. There's another in front here. Question. You talked about the dichotomy between, uh, or the false dichotomy between religious belief and science. And presumably the fear of evolution is based on the belief that if you believe in evolution, then the Bible must be wrong. That, that, that's, that's one aspect. But there are others, there are other concerns as well. Okay. So is, as you alluded to, perhaps part of the uh, social and uh, public issue here, a better understanding of the Bible and what it means, after all, there are two stories of, of creation in the book of Genesis, which is up front, which is why, which is perhaps as far as people get in reading the Bible. <laughs> Do you think that modern reading, modern study and scholarly interpretation of how the Bible evolved and how religious belief evolved is the other side of this equation? Um, I, I, I'm tempted to defer to Reverend Murphy on this, but, but I, I certainly would agree although I would look back at, at, at the history of perhaps the past 500 years of Christendom, and I would suggest that perhaps expecting Christians to come to consensus uh, about the meaning of the Bible is a hopeless quest. Well, I, but, but I would agree, that, that is a, and that's really one of the things that I was referring to earlier, that the, uh, basically more theological literacy, critical reading of Scripture is a very important component of what I was talking about. I think we probably have time for about two more questions. One back here. Uh, I was, uh, it's a technical question. I mean, uh, do biologists, when considering uh, evolution, consider the time for these complex, uh, smaller systems to combine together. Do you consider the time interval, like, uh, does it happen fast in certain cases or does it happen slow in certain organizations? Um, I, I didn't quite understand everything you said. Talking about viruses? You're talking about no, the time complex, required. You, you were talking about complex oh. systems. Oh, okay. Like, so, uh, I mean, I was just curious, like, um, so if yeah, there's sure. an intelligent designer, did he take time for some cases? to combine and bring, yeah. uh, come up with a complex system or... Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, it's a good question. I, I, I can answer this very directly in a couple of ways. Um, the, uh, uh, we don't know how long it took for the blood clotting system or the bacterial flagellum to evolve, but we can look, for example, at how long it has taken entirely new genes to evolve. And one of my examples that I, that I always love, I didn't show the slide tonight, I can show it to you afterwards if you like, um, is that in the 1970s, a group of Japanese scientists were hanging around 
a chemical factory, and there was a big waste dump of plastic waste, and they noticed there was growing on the surface of it what looked like a lawn of bacteria. But this made no sense to them, because what was being dumped in here was nylon polymer waste, and that's synthetic and bacteria can't grow on it. Nonetheless, there they were. And they, isolate, they took the bacteria, they cultured them in the laboratory, and they discovered that these were pseudomonas bacteria that had evolved an entirely new enzyme called nylon ACE. And, the, and it breaks down nylon. And this enzyme actually evolved from junk DNA, from repetitive DNA, into which there had been a little flipping around of the genetic code, so a promoter popped up, transcribed it, and then evolved an enzyme with more and more activity. How long did it take for this entirely new protein to evolve? And, and obviously, very great selective advantage, because now the bacteria could grow where they couldn't before. Less than 65 years. And the reason we can say that with some degree of certainty is that it was only 65 years ago that nylon was synthesized for the first time. So that's one example. My other favorite example is a seven-step pathway with seven different enzymes that breaks down 2,4-dinitrotoluene. This is one of the components of TNT. It's an explosive. Um, this, too, was first synthesized in the 1930s. And two years ago, an Air Force laboratory in Florida was able to show that the bac there were soil bacteria in the grounds of Air Force bases that, that had soil contaminated with this explosive residue that had evolved a seven-step pathway by co-opting enzymes from other biochemical pathways that serve different purposes to break this down. And this clearly had also happened since the 1930s. So where you have the proper opportunity, evolution can work very quickly and can produce some remarkable changes. One final question. I'm, the, I'm, I'm sorry? I'm Two? curious, and maybe Patricia's the one who can answer this. It was a group of parents in Dover who brought the legal suit against the uh, school board. Is there a similar action here in Ohio? You're saying what Ohio has done is illegal. Are parents or citizens out there challenging it legally? I'll let Patricia answer in detail, but I'll answer it quickly from my amateurish understanding of the law. To file a lawsuit, you have to have standing which is to say if you sue a government agency saying its actions are unconstitutional, you have to first show that you were injured by that government action. So all of the 11 plaintiffs in Dover were parents with kids in the classroom either t having that statement read to them or about to have it read to them. That was their standing. An ordinary citizen in Dover with nobody in the public schools could not have gone to federal court and filed that lawsuit. So you need some degree of standing. My guess would be that parents in Ohio whose students were being made to use that lesson plan or be testing on it would have similar standing if they wish to file a lawsuit. Um, not all of the parents in Dover.